So, it's not a secret that for the last God knows how many years, we haven't been able to bulk download attachments uh, from an Airtable attachment field. So I thought I'd spend maybe five, 10 minutes to, you know, make a homegrown DIY version of that functionality. Let's take a look. In our typical fashion, let's take a look at how this works. And it's really easy. All you have to do is just jump in, add an attachment. Uh, let's just open up something and add a quick attachment. And that will trigger a process that will create a new upload, a new download link for us to use. So let's delete this one. And a few seconds later, we should see um, it kicking in. There we go. And that's it. Once you press the link, you instantly download the file, uh, which is just basically a zip file with all the files within it. If you change one of the files, let's say you delete a file, let's say I delete that one, that will trigger the process again, and you'll get another uh, download link, basically. Now, there's not much to talk about in terms of database design. There's only one table. Of course, you, your Airtable database will have more than one, most likely, but uh, ultimately, uh, this is just a, an example of how uh, you can take an attachments field and generate a bulk download uh, link for those. Let's take a look at how the whole thing is set up in terms of automations and make.com and all that good stuff. Let's go. So in terms of automations, you can imagine that I'm following exactly the same recipe as I always do. Let's jump into automations. There is one trigger that is triggered by the change in the attachments field. Uh, so when a record is updated and we're only looking at the attachments field, then we run our typical script, uh, which looks like this. This is exactly, exactly the same thing that I've been using everywhere. All you need to do is just change your webhook over here with one of your own. And don't forget to add a record ID just like I've done here uh, and map the Airtable record ID value in that um, field. Next, let's take a look at how we've set up the automation. Now, from a very quick glance, uh, let me just explain what's going on. So this is the whole thing. It's broken down into about three parts. Those are the beginning where we get our trigger and we also perform a search in our, in our Google Drive folder for that particular, the way that I've basically done it, just to explain this a little bit better, we have a folder in my Google Drive where I'm storing slash creating new folders every single time that, that I get a record. Then here we are searching for that folder. If it doesn't exist, we then create a folder we update Airtable to say to the user that, hey, dude, something's happening. Then we have, then we iterate through the files and zip them up. We upload that zip, get a share link, update Airtable. Simple as that. There's really not much else to it. Now, when we do have that folder present, what we do next, well, in the, in, in that scenario, essentially, we skip the creation obviously because we already have that then we iterate through the files we zip them up we update Airtable. we search for for the old files within that folder and delete them and then finally upload the new file and update Airtable. and that's basically it now let's take a look at a deeper level uh what is going on with this make automation so our webhook hits over here um basically you know nothing really new then we get the record id here and we're just picking up on table one i mean it's called table one but really it's items that you should say then we search we perform a search of our google drive and this is how i've set it up so far folders 
and search within file file or folder names for the ID of that uh, record. Then we have that little split, that little router where total number of bundles equal to zero. In other words, I haven't found anything. And then we go ahead and create on the other end, we have total number of bundles not equal to zero. In other words, I've found a, a folder that matches that record ID. In the first instance, let's go ahead and explore this hop route over here where we create a folder. The folder name obviously is the record ID. We share that folder. Mm, actually, no, <laughs> I think that it's better not to share the folder. And then update Airtable, really like so, where I'm just updating that item. I'm getting my uh, record ID from number two and I'm just, you know, printing a quick generating new download link dot 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 and just giving a little quick timestamp over there. Next, I'm iterating through files. I'm iterating through the attachment field. Nothing really to call home about. The next, I'm just uploading that URL. Then I'm zipping up all of these attachments and I'm just creating a quick zip archive name record ID underscore files. Um, and yeah, that's basically that. I'm just mapping that upload over there. Finally, upload zip. I am then basically uploading that archive into my folder that I created from module number six over here. There we go. And finally, we get share link. We map file ID from number nine. Reader, anyone, allow file discovery, new. No and okay then finally 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 <laughs> we just um, map that web content link from there from module 16 in the bulk download link uh, so that is that let's take a look at the scenario where you have found that uh, folder then we basically do the same exact thing over here as we did over there the only real difference and just to update Airtable, yeah, I'm just basically putting that update module towards the end because, well, there's still more things to happen over there because you're kind of like that deleting some old files, yada, yada, yada. You kind of need to update the user that dude, something's happening. So this is the most interesting bit. First of all, we search for old files and I've just added this dynamically. One easy way to do this is to first turn off mapping, find that folder, and then turn on mapping so that you will see all of the, all of like this little path that gets created. All you have to do at the end is just add that file ID from module four, which is where you were searching, right? The next thing that you need to do is just query for, uh, and, and do this this way. We wanna retrieve the files, search, within file folder names, the ID underscore files dot zip, whatever it finds, then it will delete. It's important to note that it's good to add this little filter over here. Total number of bundles, not equal to zero. I would say that after any search, it's good to add this kind of thing where, uh, because otherwise it will try to delete uh, an old file and it will not find it. It will simply crash so that is a problem and the way to mitigate that problem is to add a filter to say hey when you don't find anything just stop and move on one interesting little detail that i want to point out at this point is make always goes from top to bottom in terms of how it runs its scenarios when you have a router this path will go first this path will go second. Let's say you want for some weird reason to get them to switch. Then let's say I want this path to go first. Just link that first, then link that second. And if you press auto align, you see how they switch places? It means that this will go first, this will now go second. We need this to be the other way around. So I'm just gonna unlink and relink. So I want this deleting path to go first, and then this uploading of a new file path to go second. So now that is back 
to how it was before. Now, all I really have to do is replicate this top part just down here. Upload a new file from the archive. The folder ID though is from number four, is from, from this module over here because we found the folder. Then get share link. Again, we're just mapping that new file uh, ID that we uploaded here from module number 20. And we are just updating Airtable at the end with the web content link from number 21. And that is it. Let's now take a quick look at how this whole thing works all together. I'm just going to run this once. I'm going to just delete a file. Let's say I want to delete that one. This is going to trigger after a few seconds. There we go. And you see how it first deletes the old and then uploads the new. So yeah, that is basically it. Simple as that. Okay, guys, that was it. Thank you very much for watching this uh, little shorter video. We've recently surpassed 100 subscribers to the channel. It's not much, but it means a lot. So yeah, thank you um, all for the support. If you haven't done so already, please uh, do comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.